Contestant number five, Ariel Augustin. Engineering the perfect speech. Engineering the perfect speech, please help me welcome Toastmaster Ariel Augustin. Man, this speech is going to be so sick. <laughs> this is a topic that I'm so passionate about, and the audience is totally going to connect with me. I want this speech to be better than all of my other speeches. I want it to be the most memorable speech of the day. Maybe I want to win the contest. I'm going to be confident, knowledgeable. I'm going to do my research, look up stats, throw in some quotes, charismatic, be original, be authentic. I'm going to use vocal variety. <laughs> Throw in some body gestures. And my speech is going to have purpose. It might be to inform, teach the audience something they don't know anything about, or clear up an abstract concept. It might be to entertain, make them laugh, relax, forget about the stresses of the day. It might be to persuade. Change their perspective. Have them adopt a different point of view. Go vegans! <laughs> <laughs> or it might be to inspire. Breathe life into something. Motivate. Use my own experiences to catalyze a positive change in someone's life. my message? Or worse, what if I offend someone? What if I blank out and forget a crucial part of my speech? What if I make a joke and nobody laughs? Can they tell that I'm nervous? My hands are shaking. My heart is racing. Man, there are so many faces out there. And you know what? I can't read their minds, so I don't want to look at what if I messed up? Did you see all the other speakers? They're so great. What if I'm not as good as them? What if I fail? You see, just as easily and just as quickly as I was able to anticipate your approval and my success, I grew anxious over your judgment and my failure. You see, instead of seeing public speaking as an open window, as an opportunity to transmit a message to people, to you, my audience, I saw it as a mirror upon which I projected my fears. So every time I looked up, all I saw were my insecurities. And I forgot. I obsess so much over meeting these ideals that I forgot that this speech wasn't about me. It's about my message, and it's about the conversation that we're supposed to be having together. Conversation. Yeah, it's a dialogue, not a monologue. You see, of course, I rehearsed and rehearsed for this speech, but I'm making myself vulnerable. I want this to be intimate. And yes, I'm the only one speaking, but that doesn't mean that we're not communicating. Okay, I'm producing a message. I'm transmitting it through my voice and my body. You're receiving it, you're processing it, you're deciding whether or not you agree with me, you're smiling, you're frowning, Maybe you're laughing. But most importantly, 
you're listening. Listening proactively, listening to understand, not to respond, which is something that we should but don't always do in our day-to-day -day conversations. Look, we all have ladders. Some ladders are really tall, others are short, and each rung represents something different for a different person. The bottom line is that we need to get off of these ladders. We need to plant our feet on firm ground. We need to be vulnerable so that we can learn and face our fears head on. How many of you guys have or currently do fear public speaking? <laughs> I encourage you to come stand up here where you can be seen, where you can be heard, and where you can be understood. And practice, practice, practice. Although I can't guarantee that practice will make you perfect, I can guarantee that practice will help you to improve. Instead of climbing ladders upwards, distancing ourselves, striving for perfection, let's build ladders that extend forwards. We need to come up here, share our ideas, our experiences, our beliefs, our dreams, and our fears. Ladies and gentlemen, we have work